the few traits that define a complex adaptive system held in contrast against the way we think about most of our modern businesses so that you can see the difference and start to think about in your own role, in your own team, in your own department, in your own business, how can you start to migrate in the direction of these systems that are so resilient, so intelligent, and able to do things at scale that no hierarchical system can do so that you as the leader can let go a little bit There's a whole groundswell of categories where the leading player, the dominant player, or the fastest growing player, the one that is shaking shit up, is a digital company. It's a company that's operating differently, that's hiring differently, that's made up of people that think a certain way, have certain skills, are approaching problems in a very particular way. And then there's this group of categories over here that are sort of watching that and waiting and biding time and thinking about how they operate and some of whom are completely denying the fact that those things are happening, right? Take Uber, for instance. They didn't have to invent the mobile phone. They didn't have to invent GPS. They didn't have to invent the iOS app store. They didn't have to invent the luxury sedan. They didn't have to invent the livery. They didn't have to invent 99% of the stack of value that they're actually providing to the end user. They just got to do that thin layer of icing, which was how do you knit together this collection of vehicles and users into a network and make it work, make it sing. Nobody would have thought about the problem that way except this company and the people like them, right? It's a weird way to think about the problem to say, we could use the data from the orders to have robots move the shelves around so that the warehouse is a living, breathing organism that is reorganizing itself for optimal efficiency. That is crazy science fiction to somebody that managed a warehouse even 10 years ago. And that's the world that we live in today. Look, before I get out of here, just tell me how many of these steel devices that they were producing in this factory are you guys producing in a day? How many did you produce today? And the guy said, six. So Charles is like, give me a piece of chalk. And he writes a huge six on the factory floor, just six, as big as he could, like four or five feet. And he said, thanks, great to see you. I'm flying back to New York or wherever, and, and we'll talk to you guys later. And so the day shift left. Well, the night shift came in. And they were asking each other, what's, what's the deal with the six by the door? And they're like, oh, well, Charles came in, and he asked how many had been produced, and, and he wrote a six on the floor. Well, do you know why he did it? No, we don't know why he did it. Well, the next morning when the day crew came in, the six had been wiped out, and there was a seven next to it. <laughs> and the next day when they came in, the seven had been wiped out, and there was a 10 next to that. And by the time they got to the end of the year, it was one of the highest producing facilities in the whole organization.